Good afternoon, you sick, twisted weather freaks out there, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, here to talk about weather for the next two weeks across North America. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon here in the east, noon on the west coast. The baseball playoffs are in full swing, and it's time to talk about weather. On this edition of This Week in Weather, <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll be talking about the Mid-Atlantic Coastal Storm that just finished ending, and then we'll be talking more in depth about a changing pattern coming up here in next week from October 13th to 19th across North, North America, and also the possible first upper Midwest snowstorm of the season around October 20th, maybe. And then we'll talk about the Arctic air developing in Canada, finally, finally, and then also the snow cover buildup in Siberia and Asia. So lots to talk about. Let's get right to it here. Now, we'll start out by taking a look at the actual overall pattern here as of October 8th. Now, this was, you know, last week when we had the big storm, <coughs> excuse me, coming out of the Iraqis, the one that dropped the huge snowstorm in the blizzard at Wyoming and South Dakota. Now, this was the overall pattern. We could see the strong ridge here. Let me get my pointer out so we can see it right here. And then there's our trough over the west coast. You can see right there. And here's the ridge again over the southeastern states. And, of course, remember, when they were getting that blizzard in the Rockies and Wyoming and South Dakota, how amazingly warm it was in the 90s and, well, yeah, it was, over much of the eastern northeast and upper 80s in places east of the Mississippi River. So that shows you how amplified and extreme the pattern was. All right. Now, here's our new, uh, our new uh, map here. And this is as of October 11th. And we begin to see some changes. The biggest change here, and let me point this out, is the block developing here over Great Britain, building towards Greenland. It's retrograding, building backwards, as you can see, building backwards. Well, here's the arrows right here, towards Greenland. And also the ridge over the eastern United States, building up into Canada, eastern Canada, and eventually merging over Greenland and eastern Canada and Baffin Island. And that's going to allow other changes to take place. We can see the ridge developing here very nicely in the eastern Pacific. So all of these changes are showing up in the jet stream, in which indicate that, in fact, the pattern is probably going to begin to change. Now, let me just show you what's going on. This is the uh, current cold air 850 temperature maps for North America as of October 12th. And let me point out here how amazingly... Um, let me change my color here so you can see this a little better. And uh, let me talk, show you how amazingly the cold air is all wrapped up in here. See this? Look in Canada. There's no cold air here. Very little. Very mild conditions here. All the cold air is up in here. You see this? It's all of its way up in here. So that's what's going to change. And we compare that to the... Um, uh, you know, warm water, uh, excuse me, the warm temperatures over all the United States and Canada. And we'll see how that changes significantly over the next uh, week or so. Now, let's take a look briefly at the rain amounts. This is the final rainfall map here uh, from the National Weather Service folks. And we can see how impressively amazing the rain was. Notice New York City got screwed out of the rain again, just like we thought it might right in here. They didn't get anything in here. But notice that the rain fed up into Harrisburg and South Central Pennsylvania, Gettysburg, and into D.C. A lot of rain bands in this way. And this red stuff is 8 inches of rain or more, 8 or 9 inches of rain in here. And then, of course, down in here we had 8 to 15 inches of rain and then 4 to 6 up in this area. So, again, look, there's a gap in this area here, only about 2 or 3 inches of rain here. But D.C. had definitely had, you know, 5 to 7, 8 inches of rain in here. And then even more up at Harrisonburg. So very impressive rainstorm event. Clearly the European did the best idea uh, with the rain. But it also had too much rain in New York City. So that was wrong. But it definitely had the best rains over south central Pennsylvania. It was, it was the only model to have that, in fact. Even the Canadian had more rain on the Jersey coast than over central Pennsylvania. So <clears throat> overall, the European did the best job. Not perfect, but the best. Now, let's talk about this changing pattern coming up here over North America and the possible snowstorm on October 20th. Now, we can see the changes developing in our teleconnections here. Uh, this is from the uh, uh, Alan Huffman's great weather site <clears throat> over at American Weather. And you can see the uh, charts here. Let me uh, call this up. We can see nicely. The Arctic Oscillation is negative. Then it goes to neutral here by the 20th and 24th on the latest maps. But it's definitely going negative. Now, the NAO stays negative much longer and slowly climbs to neutral by the end of the month. Okay? 
but the Arctic Oscillation goes to neutral here by the 20th or 24th. So that's interesting. But so all these things together definitely mean a colder pattern developing, a negative NAO and a negative uh, Arctic Oscillation. Definitely support that. Now this is the uh, on the other side over in the Pacific, and we can see a negative here, uh, Eastern uh, Pacific uh, uh, oscillation here very negative slowly towards neutral so that supports the ridging in Alaska right in Alaska that way the jet stream coming out of Canada here's a PNA and we can see consistently the positive PNA increases reaches a positive peak sometime around near the 20th to the 24th and then stays generally positive for the rest of the month that indicates ridging developing over western Canada so that's all it's a good sign for uh, indications of a colder pattern developing, no doubt about it. And we can see other, other indications of it. This is the uh, MJO. We can see indications here that the MJO is going, uh, here it's in phase six, so we can see October 12th, October 11th. Now this is the European weeklies, and we can see it brings it around towards weekly into phase eight and phase one, and by November, it actually has it to phase two, if that's true or not. That may be kind of far out. But here, uh, the European, the operational European, very weak, but definitely brings into phase seven and phase eight and phase one. And what does that mean? Well, the other site, which does very good with the MJOs here, this is the folks from the University of Albany, Kyle McRitchie. And you can see he has these different plots showing a bit more amplitude in this area here, as you can see it. And it definitely goes into uh, phase seven and then phase eight by uh, early late October, early November. And again, what does that mean? What sort of patterns can we expect in October if the MJO goes into Phase 7 and Phase 8? Well, this is the MJO Phase 7 pattern. So this shows a lot of ridging up in here. Let me highlight it here. This is the ridging. See it up in here? And then a trough over the middle part of the country and a negative NAO right in here, as you can see, NAO right in there. Very clearly pronounced, and a negative Arctic Oscillation over here. So this is a cold and amplifying pattern. There's no doubt about that. That's what that indicates. And so... Any model which shows an amplifying pattern should be believed because the MJO is showing it as well. That's one of the great things about the MJO, and it supports models independently of the models. So it gives the forecast more confidence. Now, in phase eight, the pattern is about the same. It relaxes a little bit, as you can see here. If you go back, you can see it's about the same sort of pattern. A little less uh, amp a negative NEO, a little less ridging on, in the Eastern Pacific uh, PNA, negative PNA or uh, the EPO, but pretty much the same sort of thing. I notice that in phase eight, there is a little bit of ridging here over the eastern United States. So the initial blast of cold air in October is going to be over the plains and the Rockies in the Midwest, not over the East Coast. There'll be some, but not initially. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about that pattern change. This is the free European at 48 hours out, and we can see the system here. Let me point it out to you. That short wave coming out of California is going to take off and do some damage that way coming across. Notice there's a little cold air in Canada, but not much. Um, clear this out, and then we'll go to the next one. This is the uh, European at 96 hours out, so this is for the middle of the week, and we can see that storm now was in Cal, was in uh, over Southern California, is now over the uh, Dakotas. It may be cold enough for snow in Minnesota and the, Daco well, the Dakotas in here as well, as you can see. Might be cold enough. There's the low, as you can see right there. And uh, then if we clear that out, we can see this looks like in more detail here. Same sort of system. Again, the temperatures might be cold enough. Uh, in this area for some snow, but this is just the first of the systems. The big system comes in behind it. Now, after this blows on through, this is the one of the 19th, excuse me, this is day 9. This is on uh, the uh, 20th. We can see a big, strong low here in the eastern Great Lakes, some cold air coming in. We're getting a lot colder temperatures now here in Canada, as you can see. Uh, the temperatures are getting a lot colder up in here, but this system definitely going up through the Midwest, and that might be cold enough to produce a snowstorm in Minnesota and Iowa and portions of Wisconsin. This is the European, which shows that. You can see the European clearly shows temperatures are cold enough in here. Excuse me. They are cold enough in this whole area in here for uh, a snow in Minnesota, Iowa, uh, maybe Chicago, but I doubt it. Uh, Wisconsin, that sort of thing. And a lot of warm air up in here. A lot of thunderstorms potentially for the 20th and 21st. So we have to keep that in mind. But definitely the data supports that as well. So we may see some thunderstorms. A lot of rain for the eastern Corn Belt, the Ohio Valley. This is a lot of rain up in here. This whole area, this would produce a lot of rain up in here as well. So very active coming at day 9 and day 10 as the pattern shift gets underway. That often happens in the autumn months. And this is the day 9 European and the GFS. Well, we can see clearly the big ridge here. Let me highlight it so you can see it. There's the big ridge right up in here, and here's the trough coming down this way. 
There's the PNA ridge there. There's a more of a trough in the eastern United States. So there is some dispute as to where the initial trough is going to be, whether it's going to be over the Midwest and the Plain States or the Midwest and the East Coast. But given that it's day 9 or day 10, we don't know that yet, but it's still definitely coming. And we can clearly, all the models also show our very clear, very uh, pronounced um, negative NAO right in here. Right in there, you can see that as well. So, <clears throat> And then finally, this is the day 10 European. And we can see, look how much colder it is over central and eastern Canada. Wow. The cold air has really come down. We can see the ridge now developing very nicely here. The flow coming down from Canada into the plains in the Midwest and across New England. So this is a totally new different pattern. Uh, not a surprise. It's mid-October. It's not earth-shaking, but it's definitely a colder pattern. Let's talk about the buildup of cold air in Canada. Since we mentioned that before, this is the day 10 European. You can see how much colder it is now. Remember how we talked about all the cold air before being way up in here, up in northern Canada? Not anymore. So that's the change which is coming. And this is the European Day 10 Ensemble. And we can see very clearly, very nicely, um, a pretty good sized ridge right in here, trough over here. So the European at Day 10, the Ensemble support more of the GFS solution of the ridge being over the uh, e eastern U.S. as opposed to the Midwest and the Plain States. And this is the uh, GFS uh, Day 10 map. And I, these are all the different members, but this here is the mean in here. So you want to look generally, you want to look at the, this feature in here. See, this is the mean. And we can clearly see there's our huge ridge right up in here. Big low in the Aleutian Islands. That's the Aleutian Island low. Big trough over the eastern United States. Very interesting and, and very uh, significant pattern shift coming. And we can see the change. This is the day four, the first blast of cold air, which comes into the Plain States, not of the eastern United States. Remember we talked about October, uh, um, I guess the 20th, 21st, to be a warm over the eastern United States. We can clearly see this. Uh, this is the 16th and 17th. It's warm in the east, cold over the Plain States. And then um, here is, oops, let me change that. This is the uh, October 26th. We can see how much cold it is. Again, look here. Look how cold it is in these areas. Some of these are showing very impressive cold blasts in some areas. This is, of course, uh, 16 days out. It's kind of it's, it's way out there, but it's definitely uh, something to watch out for. Um, so it definitely the second blast of cold air looks pretty impressive. And we can see the change in the anomalies. This is the current one here. Okay, This here is um, October 11. Look how warm it is up in here. All the cold air is in here. And this is uh, day 10. This is the 22nd, 21st in here. There's the cold air coming down this way. Definitely. And look at the warm air in Alaska because of the ridging. So the models are definitely onto something here. This is the uh, GFS, finally 360 hours out. And again, if we focus on the main map in here, we can see this, the pattern holds. And there's a lot of data which shows the pattern holding into November. And this is the CFS. This is for the period the first week here. This is for uh, 17th to the 22nd. We can see the very strong ridge here and the deep trough over the eastern United States. Very clear there. And then the next week, this is October 22nd to the 27th. The pattern holds. Strong ridge over Western Canada. Deep trough over the eastern United States. It could be pretty darn cold going into Halloween for a lot of people east of the Mississippi River. And this is the October 27th to November 1st. The pattern begins to weaken a little bit, relax a little bit, but it's still there. And then finally, you see more of the same going to the first full week of November. And finally, let's look at the snow buildup in Canada. Notice this. Whoa. What is this here right here, folks? See this? This is the snow right now. Ice cover. The ice cover over the northern hemisphere is about to break uh, the recent years above 2006, 2007, and above uh, 2009. So it's very, very aggressive here with the snow, with the ice cover developing over the northern poles. Does it mean anything? Don't know, but it's something to watch out for. All right, here's the snow cover from Rutgers. You can clearly see that it's above normal um, over Siberia right in here, below normal in Canada, but that's because it's been so darn warm. And we, I've enlarged it here a little bit so you can see it a little more. And then we can see the change over Asia. This is the uh, uh, GFS showing snow cover change, October 11th to October 19th and 20th. Huge increases in snow in central Russia developing here over the next eight or nine or ten days. And finally, let me let you know that the preliminary forecast is going to be October uh, my first one is going to be November 2nd, and then the final one is going to be November 21st. So uh, I don't like issuing in September. I don't think issuing in October does any good. We need to get all the players on the field. So I believe that November 2nd, I usually issue around Halloween, and that's not going to change this year, and the final one, November 21st. 
This is meteorologist DT from weatherisk.com. I'll talk to you soon.